What's up everyone, in this video, uh, I'm gonna show you how to use the Google Sheets file that I created to help analyze uh, Moxie Monitor data. Uh, but before this, I'm gonna show you a few practical examples of where I place the sensors and how I use the Moxie. Then we're gonna review the, uh, the, the app that I use to collect the data right now and how to copy them and how to export them. Then we'll see how you can create your own file uh, of the file that I created. So it's an open source one. You can download it, make it your own, modify it as you uh, see fit. How you can then insert the data that you collected during either the testing session or the training session with the Moxies. How you can modify the graphs, how you can create your own graphs if you wanna uh, personalize your reports or your analytics. And I'll also show you a little example of the report that I uh, give out after I do the physiological profiling with the Moxies. Uh, the goal of this video is really to offer a base of work for all the users of the Moxie monitor to simplify the interpretation of the data and to have somewhat of a common vocabulary, common ground to work from so we can exchange and share the work that we all do with this uh, very, very interesting tool. It's it's kind of the video or the tool or the, 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 the Google Sheets file that I wanted to have, that I would have liked to have when I started using the tool. So I hope that it's gonna uh, serve a purpose for all the people interested in uh, using this tool a little bit more. So let's get into it. As I said before, the goal of this video is to show you how to go from what you see here on the left, uh, so a test or a training session with the Moxie monitor to some clean and simple graphs in Google Sheets. Uh, first of all, I wanna say that Moxie is currently working on developing the Moxie portal, which will include a mobile app, a web app, a web tool, and a data cloud as well, which will allow you to collect uh, stream in real time and uh, analyze data from the Moxie monitor uh, really, really easily. It should be out later this year. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope that what I'm going to provide today uh, will give a basis of work for uh, those who want to already get ahead and get a better handle on the Moxie data and uh, maybe save a little bit of time on the data analysis side of things. Uh, here are a few practical examples of uh, using the Moxie. Uh, sorry about those shortened videos on the left here, but I've got Giro, one of the guys that I work with uh, in my rugby team, who's doing some sprints on an air bike. David doing a, a 414, some modified step test on the air runner. Uh, then Giro again on the rugby pitch, doing some uh, running intervals with the Moxies. And uh, at the end, Nico updating his physiological profile on uh, the bike. So usually I'll place one on the left uh, VL, one, one on the right VL, and one on the delt. Uh, this is usually where I'll place my three sensors. If you only have one, I'd recommend uh, the right VL for most uses, but there's obviously other uh, cases where you can uh, use it in different spots. I recommend the Moxie Forum if you want to dig a little bit deeper into uh, sensor placements for specific uses. Uh, after this, what you're going to want to do is um, just adjust the settings of your Moxie monitor or monitors. You'll want to head to uh, this uh, settings page here. The link is in the description of the video. You can switch it from N plus to Bluetooth. It usually comes uh, with the N plus setting by default when you buy it. So make sure you switch it to the Bluetooth mode. I like to set it up to the fast update uh, rate. So it's a 0.5 second update with no data smoothing. The two second, the default setting is a two second update with about a 10, I think it's a 10 second data smoothing. So it's good for longer stuff, but if you're doing short intervals, you might miss some data points. So I always uh, leave my Moxies on the fast um, update rate. And then from there, you'll want to download, what I use right now is the VO2 Master Manager app. It's both iOS and Android. Uh, once you're on the app, what you want to do is modify one of those screens uh, to see your Moxie data in real time. So you can click on edit tiles on the top right. Here you can see I'm just changing the, the title of this screen. Uh, and if I go back into it and scroll down, I'm gonna be able to add a heart rate sensor. I just use a polar chest belt and uh, here muscle oxygenation and total hemoglobin. You can sync up to three sensors uh, with this app. You can then also modify the tiles depending on how you wanna display them. Here you can see I have a screen with all three sensors displayed in real time. This is how I collect my data right now. Then, uh, so even in real time, you can actually display uh, the data. You could see uh, on the iPad here, you can see the SMO2, the purple line at the top, updating in real time during a rowing interval. 
THB is very hard to see uh, in real time, but you'll be able to see it better on the graphs and heart rates in real time as well. Once you finish the session of the test, you want to export your data and you want to make sure you select the one second average interval. Uh, export to CSV, send it to yourself via email. This is how I work. And then we're gonna grab the CSV from the email directly and paste it in the file that I created. Before that, let's uh, grab the file. So if you go in the description of this video, you can just copy and paste or click on this link, go into your browser, paste it, and you're going to create a copy of this file for yourself. So it's gonna be your own. You can modify it as you see fit. Uh, it's in view only mode right now. So what you want to do is click on file, click on make a copy and you can name it whatever you want. Let's call it my own. If I can select this, my own copy of Moxie Analytics. It's an open source file. You can do whatever you want with it. The goal is really to provide this platform for everybody who wants to um, <clears throat> be able to analyze their data a little bit quicker than what is currently available. Uh, so once this is done, you have your own copy in your own uh, Google Drive. And uh, I've already set up the time axis on the left here and heart rate, right VL SMO2, left VL SMO2, left delt SMO2, right VL THB, left VL THB, left delt THB. This is the data that we're going to be collecting. So if we go back to our email that we sent ourselves from the a VO2 master manager app. I have my CSV file here. I'm going to open this wherever I am, iMac uh, on my Mac computer or on my PC. I want to make sure that my columns are in this order. So as you saw before on the sheet, time, heart rate, SMO2 of the right leg, SMO2 of the left leg, SMO2 of the left delt, THB right leg, THB left leg, THB left delt. And I want to copy from this case down. So I, I don't need to copy this uh, because it's already in the sheet. So grab 47 and I'm going to go all the way to the column I. So I get all my data. Here we go. I copy this. I'm going to paste it in the sheet. It's going to take a few seconds and you might see a message telling you that the page isn't responding. Just click wait. Even if you have to do it three or four times, it will end up by working. It just takes a bit of time given the volume of data that you're pasting. So here we go. Okay, so here we go. The data just pasted. And as you can see on the right hand side, I've already calculated for you the HHB, so the deoxyhemoglobin for the left VL, sorry, left VL, right VL, left delt, as well as the rate of change of SMO2. Thanks to Evan for his um, insights into those things. If you're not familiar with those metrics, please go look at Evan Pycon's work. And now we can go to the advanced analytics and what you should see is all the graphs already created for you. Uh, so again, the idea with this was really just to give a base of work for people that start using the Moxie. So if you only have one sensor, you might not see all of those. You might just see the, the top one here, the right, uh, right, right VL. So I made one for the right VL, one for the left VL, one for the left deltoid, right and left vastus lateralis to compare the sides, all SMO2 graphs together. Uh, deoxyhemoglobin, I always like to put the heart rate no matter what, so that I, I have a, a, a kind of a clear view of where the intervals start and finish. And SMO2 rate of change that is also graphed here. So again, this is yours. You can do whatever you want with it. Change the labels, change the colors, uh, edit the screens, uh, make your own. I'll show you how to make your own graphs if you're not familiar with Google Sheets. It's pretty simple. So here we go. Insert chart. And uh, first you're going to select the data from the raw data tab. So here we have our blank chart. I'm gonna pick a smooth line chart. And uh, for my data range, I'm gonna go to my raw data tab and I'm gonna select A1 through H. And so here I take the eight out just so that it selects the H column in its entirety. So it's gonna select from A1 all the way down to the bottom of H. And that's gonna be my data range to work from. Uh, if you wanted to use those other advanced metrics, you can obviously select them as well. Once this is done, it's going to send me back to the charts so I can see everything's on the graph here. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And before doing anything else, let's say I only want to graph the THBs. 
Um, and so X axis is going to be time. I'm going to select time here. And then in the series, what I'm going to do is going to take out the time and I'm going to leave the heart rate. Again, it gives me a good overview of where the intervals start and stop. I'm going to take out the SMO2. Oops, what happened there? Uh, Command Z on Mac to cancel whatever you just did. So again, remove SMO2 of the right VL, remove SMO2 of the left VL, and remove SMO2 of the left delt. So I'm left with heart rate and my three THBs. Right now they're all on the left axis, so I just need to customize this a little bit to make it uh, easier to interpret. So my heart rate I like to put in yellow, but again, if you want to pick a different color, it's up to you. It's on the left axis, so I'm happy here, zero to 200. Uh, right VL is red, I'm happy with that, but I would like that to be on the right axis. My, my left VL, I want that to be orange, and I want that on the right axis again, because the scale is so much different that we're not gonna be able to see what's going on otherwise. And for my left delts, I want that dark red. That's the right color, right axis. So now all I have left to do is go to my right vertical axis and change the minimum value. And if I want to push that down a bit, I'll put the top value a little bit higher. And now you can see that I have my graph with uh, my three THB lines and my heart rate. I can add a title, I can modify how the, the screen looks. If I want to add some lines here at the very bottom, vertical axis, major steps, I'm happy with 50s but I'd like it to count every 10 BPM. So here we go. And then uh, if we do vertical, we just vertical, so horizontal for time. If I wanna add minute by minute on the minor count, I'll pick nine since we already have 10 minute intervals. And here we go. Now we have a nice pretty graph of everything that was collected during the session or the test. And again, you can create multiple tabs. You can duplicate them. You can make your own reports after uh, physiological profiling test, for example. So I'll just quickly show you what I did with mine so you have an idea. Uh, so that's the report that I'll uh, send to the coach after I test their athlete on the, the, the step test with the MOXIES. Here you have all the data from the test, the different intervals, the different power outputs, the duration of each step, the RPE of the athlete, the SpO2 measured on the finger. Um, I was even able to get the um, average heart rate on the last minute of each step. Uh, the way I did that is I just synced my uh, data so that essentially the first second started right when the first interval started, which means that it's kind of lined up. And then I was able to pick uh, from the data set, well, I want the average from minute three to minute four because that's the last minute of my first interval here. And that way that gets calculated automatically, as you can see at the top here from uh, the raw data on the other side. I have my heart rate zones. Uh, I have all the, uh, all the data that's been collected. I've got the overview of the results and I've got a few of the graphs that are included in the report as well for people to overview, to, to look over. And then I'm gonna have my training recommendations, which are gonna be specific to each athlete after that. Um, and here you go. So you can really do whatever you, you want with this. You can modify it as you want. And then if you have any questions or want to contact me, I put that all under the little contact tab in the sheet. So feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it will be useful to you. Um, again, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share it with the community as well if you feel like it's going to be something of added value for people to use. Uh, I look forward to hearing your feedback on this. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. See you soon for our next video. Take care.